As technology advances, more and more people are turning to home automation to simplify their life. From smart thermostat to voice activated assistants, these devices are designed to make our home more effective and convenient. But what if you could create your own home automation device tailored specifically to your needs? In this video, we will show you how to build your own DIY home automation device that can controls everything from your lights to your coffee maker. This DIY home automation device uses an ESP8266 to operate two independent relays to switch to outputs or lower. The user can visit home automation's device web page and utilize the buttons to operate XYZ equipments connected to two relays. You can visit this project's instructable page for getting the code and other details about this project. If you're interested in purchasing one, you can also find this board on my Tindy page. Now let's get started with the build. The first step is to create the PCB design for this home automation board, which consists of an ESP07S basic setup. The ESP07S is an ESP8266 board. And like all the ESP8266 boards, it simply required four 10K resistors linked to different GPIO pins. We include two relays in this design to control the output. These relays are controlled by N-channel MOSFET and the gate of these MOSFET are connected to GPIO 4 and 0. Also, we connect two LEDs to GPIO 15 and GPIO 2, which will be added near each relay when the component are placed on the PCB layout and will serve as an indicator when the relays are toggled. This project does not incorporate an LDO, which is typically required when working with 5V input and ESC modules to step down the 5V into 3.3V. Instead, we utilize an AC isolated power supply module in place of an LDO, which converts the 240V AC into 5V and 3.3V filtered DC. This power supply module has two output voltages. A few slots were placed between the AC pin and DC component for the isolation purposes and the ESP07S configuration is located on the one side of board while the other is occupied with relays and other components. After the PCB design was completed, the Gerber data was generated and then sent to PCB way for samples. An order was placed for the PCBs with white solder mask and black cell screen as it looked pretty cool in general. The PCBs were received within a week and they were excellent as expected. Really love the quality of PCBs made by PCBWay. There are other manufacturers available but their service is always on another level. Check out PCBWay for getting great PCB service at a less cost. Board assembly process begin by first adding solder paste to each component pads one by one. Next, using a tweezer, we pick and position each SMD component in their designated location. Following that, we carefully lift the entire circuit board and set it down on the mini SMT hot plate, which heats the PCB from below up to the solder paste melting temperature. As soon as the PCB reaches that temperature, solder paste melts and all the components are connected to their pads. The TST components are then assembled and their pads are soldered using a soldering iron. The board assembly is now completed. This complete home automation board, which has every component attached properly to its location, is the end result of the board assembly process. We may now move on to the next step, which is to program the ESP07S so we can use this board for controlling things. You might not be aware that the Node MCU board can also be used to program any ESP board. By taking a Node MCU board and connected a jumper with its ground pin and the enable pin, which puts the ESP8266 of the Node MCU into sleep mode. We may utilize the Node MCU now to program the onboard ESP07S module. This enables us to connect an external ESP board to the Node MCU. So essentially, we are turning off the ESP board on the Node MCU and connecting a second ESP board to few of its pins. 
I have made a video about this process and even publish an instructables about it which you can check out from here. Link is in video description. The test sketch which actually is a chaser sketch is uploaded to the ESP board. Its main function is to sequentially toggle each output pin to show how the board functions. After uploading the code, we unplug the board from the Node MCU programmer and attach an AC cord to the board live and neutral connectors using a soldering iron. The gate of two MOSFET that are connected to relays are attached to the GPIO4 and GPIO0. The LEDs are connected to GPIO15 and GPIO2. The chaser sketch ensures that the each output is functional, allowing us to proceed to the next phase which is to connect an AC load to this home automation board and upload the main sketch. The hot site wiring is straightforward. We connect an AC supply to the board's AC connector as well as live and neutral wires. The live goes to each of the relay's COM port. The NO of both relay is connected to a CON2 port. By wiring components with this board in accordance with the wiring diagram, we may add a load by connecting it to the neutral and NO of the connector. With this configuration, we could also connect two loads. While working with an AC source, be sure to follow the fundamentals precaution while wiring. Do keep in mind that dealing with alternating current is dangerous. So wear gloves, avoid touching the hot side of the board with your bare hands and avoid lifting the board while it's connected. Here's a little hack that we can do while working with this board. We can 3D print a case for it that will isolate the AC connections and make it a little bit safer. To test that the relays are actually operating, we connect a 25 watt tube light to this board's load one and ran the test sketch again. The tube light flashed rapidly, as did the other output that were being turned on and off sequentially. We first edit the SSID and the password in the sketch. Next, we upload the code into the ESP07S module using the Node MCU programmer. After uploading, we open the serial monitor and copy the IP address shown when the ESP get connected to the Wi-Fi. We paste the IP address in any browser and web app will open up, which will be used to toggle two outputs. This web app is completely customized and is made completely from a single sketch without using any third party tool. This sketch is a fusion of classic embedded C and HTML with a little bit of CSS. The final result of this quick project is a dual load home automation device that can be used to control two different AC devices by a web app. The next iteration of this project will have more relays, which will increase the outputs. Do leave a comment if you need any help regarding this project. This is it for today folks and thanks PCBWay for supporting this project. You guys can check them out if you need great PCB service and stencil service for less cost and great quality. And I'll be back with a new project pretty soon. Peace out.